Hey guys, it's time for another Math Easy Solution. It's that time of year again. March Madness is amongst us, so what we're going to do is find out the odds of making a perfect NCAA bracket, and also what you can do to improve your chance of making a perfect one. So we're just going to look at the setup here. Uh, there's 64 teams in the bracket. It's a single elimination tournament, and there's four corners, and what happens is that the winner of each corner will represent the final four and then the winners will go to the national championship game. If you want to see a bigger picture of this uh, bracket, check the description box below. So the first thing we need to do is find out the total amount of games that's going to be played in this tournament. That's going to help us find out the odds uh, of making a perfect bracket. So what you're going to notice is that in the first round there's uh, 64 teams and then what we're going to do is divide that by two because there's two teams playing in each game um, so that's going to give us 32 games in the first round. So for the second round, what we're going to do is take 32 uh, teams because the other 32 got eliminated. These ones are going to the next round. We're going to divide that by 2 to get 16 games in the second round. So we keep following this pattern. We'll go down to 8 games and then 4, 2, and then 1, which is the national championship game we add this together, we're going to get a total of 63 games in the bracket, which is exactly one less than the total number of teams in the bracket. And uh, that happens with other tournaments as well, single, single elimination. So it's one uh, game less than the total amount of teams. So using the 63 teams that we uh, found, we're going to use that to find out the odds of making a perfect NCAA bracket if we guess completely at random. So basically flip a coin, we don't care about the seeds, we're just going to pick whatever team. So in order to do that, we need to see how many combinations there are. So how many combinations there are to win just one game? There's only two. It's either this team wins or that team wins. And you have to guess based on that. So for the next game, there's also two combinations. And then there's another one. So if we want to uh, guess three of them, we just take two times two times two. That'll get us the amount of combinations. Uh, there are for those three games. But what we need to do is multiply it uh, 63 times. That's going to give us what we need to find. So in another way of writing this down is 2 to the power of 63, uh, which roughly equals 9.22 times 10 to the 18, which is 9.22 uh, quintillion, uh, which is a huge number, quintillion. So in order to put this in a little bit of a perspective, uh, we're going to compare it to the uh, lottery. So the 9.22 quintillion is uh, 658 billion times more combinations than a typical lottery, which is just insane. So the total odds of making a perfect NCAA bracket while guessing randomly is 9.22 quintillion to 1, which is, yeah, uh, just like the comparison of the lottery, 658 billion times more uh, odds. So what we're going to do is look at a way to make the odds a little bit more in our favor. So this example, it says, considering the fact that a 16th seed has never beaten the first seed, what are the odds of making a perfect bracket? Assuming that the first seed will always beat uh, the 16th seed in the first round. So that is actually the case ever since the tournament has become 64 uh, team bracket in 1985. So what we're going to do is assume that out of the 63 games, four of them, which are the ones that are 1 versus 16, there's four of them, we're going to minus those four games from the 63 total. Because we're going to assume that we got those ones right. So that's going to make it 59 total games that we have to guess. So that makes our odds of winning a little bit better. Instead of 2 to the power of 63, it's 2 to the power of 59, which will give us a total amount of combinations uh, roughly equaling uh, 5.76 times 10 to the uh, 17. So you're going to notice that, yeah, it's definitely a better chance than the other one. Uh, there's this many combinations, so the odds will be uh, this many to 1. And, but it's still such a big number. It's still like a really difficult. So what are some other ways to improve your chance of making a perfect bracket? So what you can do is uh, increase your odds by using trends and patterns from previous uh, NCAA tournaments. Um, so like, for example, I have one here. 
In the round of 64, uh, this is the one we did prior, it's 16th, defeating first is actually 0% chance, it's never been done. Um, uh, but when you look at this one over here, 15th defeating second, only happens 6% of the time. Seven times has it happened um, in 30 years of this tournament. So that'll help you uh, make your bracket and actually increase your chance of making a perfect one. Uh, this one over here, 14th defeating third, 12%. Um, and then this one, 13th defeating fourth, uh, 22%. So these are the types of things that you can use to increase your chance of making a perfect bracket. This was only the, for the first round. You can do that for the second, the third, different kinds of trends, and that'll really uh, improve your chance. You know, these kinds of trends along with uh, professional uh, research and also really important is basketball analysis. That can significantly, uh, significantly improve your odds of making a perfect bracket. But again, with that being said, even all that data that you have, the odds are still significantly harder than winning the lottery. Um, and some experts uh, say that even if the most carefully put together bracket, that'll give you odds resembling 1 in 100 billion still. So it's still extremely hard, and there hasn't been somebody who had a perfect bracket uh, recorded yet in uh, history. So hey, maybe this is the year. Um, good luck with all your brackets, guys. Uh, we'll see you next time.